begin. You're you're recording now. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so let me start by saying good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining this morning. On behalf of Meek Dices, we thank you for presenting today. I'm Pat Collins, the Meek coordinator. The topic today will be Cisco Umbrella DNS security. The contract that supports this topic is the IT security and solutions contract. Um, the presenter to the presenter today will be Marvin Rose and Marvin, uh, you can take it over. Marvin is a senior network engineer. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you, Pat. Good morning, sure. everybody. Thanks. Thanks for joining today. Um, I wanted to mention before I get started that today's meeting will be recorded for future reference. So good morning to those of you who are joining me live and good afternoon or evening or morning if you're watching this later. Uh, without further ado, I'll get right into my presentation this morning, which as Pat mentioned is on Cisco Umbrella, securing your internet security. We'll talk about some of the challenges that organizations see today, at a little bit of an overview of the product, and then drill into the details of the umbrella solution, which includes not only DNS security, which you may be familiar with, but also has a number of connections, some integration with other Cisco products, and more recently includes a secure web gateway, cloud delivered firewall, as well as CASB functionality and touch on Cisco Secure X finally. The challenges. Historically, when we look at how we had applications set up and how we access IT resources in our organizations, things were hosted on premises. You had to be on a corporate network in order to access them, get things done. Branch offices would tunnel all the traffic back to the corporate data center, whether it was over MPLS or direct circuits. 80% of the traffic was internal. All the internet access went to that corporate headquarters and you had a complete security stack, the firewall, the secure get web gateway, any proxies, all within that corporate data center. For years, that's the way we did most everything. Internal 80%, internet 20%, whether you were at headquarters, a branch office, or a roaming user. That has changed though quite a bit, uh, not just historically, but more recently with the pandemic, we've seen in total inversion of that traffic model where we're seeing more internal traffic be about 20% and internet based or internet bound traffic be more like 80%. That's what really happened over the past five years. Organizations have continued to adopt cloud applications, whether they're cloud native applications or just software as a service, a Microsoft 365, a G Suite, that sort of thing, running more of their workloads from the cloud. That percentage of internet traffic flipped over. It is now the majority of traffic we see. It's not very practical in many cases to backhaul that through expensive lease lines, MPLS lines, through VPNs. It just doesn't make any sense anymore. We used to force all the internet traffic through the single stack of security appliances at corporate headquarters. That leads to performance problems, impacts user satisfaction, causes issues with software as a service, SaaS adoption in many organizations. So a more modern approach is to enforce your security at the cloud edge. We optimize the network routing from anywhere to the cloud. Since there's more applications in the cloud, that's really the way we work. The number of mobile and roaming workers has increased. So many people working from home these days. And that way the branch offices can have direct internet access, direct cloud access. Some people may be adopting SD-WAN, software defined wide area network. Uh, we can integrate Cisco Umbrella into that. So as you move into that more direct internet access from wherever you are, whether it's mobile or at a branch office, you can no longer depend on that on-premise single security stack you had at your headquarters. You need a way to secure your branch and your cloud edge. Four out of five in a January 2019 survey said that they're shifting that direct internet access model. So accordingly, security has to adjust to this new approach. Majority of customers want a multifunction security platform to solve that remote security challenge. Cisco offers that with the Cisco Umbrella product. If you don't know about Umbrella, it started out back in 2009 as OpenDNS, OpenDNS for Business. So it's been around for quite a bit. In late 2015, Cisco acquired Umbrella, uh, OpenDNS, and then it added additional security functionality first uh, with the Secure Internet Gateway in 2017, the multifunction security in 2019, that is, Secure web gateway, firewall as a service, cloud access security broker, 
functionality integration into Cisco's SD-WAN offering. And we've continued up to today with continued evolution towards a cloud native multifunction security and networking solution. You may have heard the term secure access service edge or SASE as it's called by Gartner, their term, not ours, but it's very widely used in the industry. What it is, is Gartner's way of describing the convergence of networking and security services as a service delivered from a cloud. So you'll see those terms, those sort of features and functions out there on the bottom right, whether it's CASB or cloud SD, SWG, ZTNA, zero touch network access, VPN, platform as a service, firewall as a service, DNS, remote browser, uh, isolation, all those things are combining together to make what they call secure access service edge. It's a very transformational sort of technology, but it's really not widely deployed yet. Widely talked about, yes, in the tech industry, but right now only about 1% of the people who we believe will have SASE in one way or another have it. So it's an emerging technology as of 2019. But it is gaining momentum. You may have seen this curve also that peak of expectations, inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment and slope of enlightenment leading to the plateau of productivity. Again, another Gartner hype cycle sort of a way of speaking about it. But that aside, by 2023, uh, we believe that 20% of enterprise will have adopted various components of SASE from the same vendor up from 5% in 2019, less than 5%. And by 2024, that will just continue to accelerate with at least 40% of enterprising having enterprises having explicit strategies to adopt SASE. So what is the Cisco product that does all this? Umbrella, the multifunction security solution. You may have seen this picture of Umbrella before. Um, what these little breaks in the blue, blue rectangle show you is that these are all in one cloud delivered services, all these different types of security services. And I'll go into each one of these in more detail, but briefly, there's your DNS security that you may be familiar with with Cisco Umbrella traditionally or OpenDNS. It's used by all devices and it's a great first layer of defense to enforce security block domains associated with malware, phishing, or any unacceptable requests that violate your organization's policy. The secure web gateway is a full proxy based in the cloud and the web. It gives you both existing and new functionality with the ability to rapidly add new features and functions because it is all cloud-based and delivered from the cloud. The cloud delivered firewall, new functions above and beyond the layer three, four firewalling. We have layer seven application visibility and control. I'll talk about that in new detail and more details later on. The cloud access security broker or CASB feature is there and interactive threat and tell. One of the big advantages of all of Cisco's security solutions is the threat intelligence at Talos Security, which is the largest private threat intelligence organization in the world. Umbrella itself sees about 350 billion, billion with the B internet requests per day. And they use that deep knowledge of the threats and flow it into the other elements to give top security efficacy to all of Cisco's platforms. And we don't wanna just have the perspective of one product. So Umbrella combines its threat intelligence across the Cisco security portfolio and third-party security solutions with SecureX, the integrated security platform. And finally, down at the bottom, it's really simple to get traffic to Umbrella for deep inspection, whether it's through SD-WAN integration, through the Viptel acquisition, or other ways such as pack files, proxy chaining, Cisco AnyConnect, roaming user clients. We have a whole range of ways to get traffic to Umbrella from any device, from any user, and do it securely. So the key capabilities, visibility, protection, and control. What we aim to do is give you a secure on-ramp to the internet everywhere, whether you're on or off your corporate network, whether it's one app or another app, all apps really, all devices, whether or not things are encrypted with SSL, whether or not things are going onto the internet via a sanctioned way, that is a, a way that's sanctioned by the organization, or whether it's a shadow IT being done by sort of one-off actors within your organization, we give you protection of not just DNS layer security, but web inspection, file inspection provided by Cisco Secure Endpoint, the AMP for Endpoints product, sandboxing provided by ThreatGrid, all that's natively built into the umbrella solution with deep interactive threat intelligence. We just added file type blocking as well. 
and we give you control. So you can have control over your, all your URL blocks and allow lists, your ports and protocol rules, your content filtering, very granular app controls, including layer seven firewall application visibility and controls for non-web app discovery and control. So that DNS and SWG secure web gateway includes non-web apps so that all app traffic can be inspected and controlled. So the DNS security, let's look into that a little bit deeper. As I mentioned, 350 billion DNS requests per day pouring up to umbrella, 100 million daily active users, over 22,000 enterprise customers being serviced in 190 countries worldwide. So really unsurpassed global coverage is what Cisco offers in the view of the internet that they have so that they can take that view of the internet, pull out the threats and make it into actionable information that can be used to secure your organization. The DNS layer security, we describe it as the first line of defense. It can be just deployed enterprise-wide really in minutes, change your DNS servers to point to umbrella as their resolver and boom, you're getting security right within the first minutes of implementing Cisco umbrella. And once you have that, you can block your domains associated with malware, phishing, command and control callbacks anywhere, your basic security. By doing that, we stop threats right at the earliest point. That is when that name is resolved by the endpoint, by the client. Stop them right there. And if there's malware inside, stop it before it ever gets down to the endpoint. And because you have that integrated security platform, your umbrella and any other Cisco security products through SecureX, we can accelerate the response to any threats that are seen. And not only does it give you security, in many cases, it actually gives you faster internet access. The umbrella resolvers uh, have been shown in third-party industry benchmarks to have faster internet access because the latency of them and the fact that they're deployed to data centers around the world gives you much better DNS lookup times than say using a local or regional DNS uh, provider. We give you visibility and protection for all activity everywhere. So whether you're at the headquarters, whether you're an IoT device, a mobile device, uh, whether you're bring your own device, you're at a branch, you're roaming, you're an iOS device that's uh, managed by your organization. We give you that security, the visibility and protection for everywhere, no matter where you are, no matter what port or protocol you're going across. At the DNS layer, we see the domain request, we see the IP response at the IP layer. When our roaming client is installed, we can even see direct connections to the internet that didn't use DNS. So the combination of the umbrella statistical models and Talos security intelligence, plus partner feeds and force 7 million malicious domains and IPs across all ports and protocols. Plus you can even build your own custom domain list, whether it's using the GUI, sort of one by one or using an API. If you have a feed, you can use the application programming interface or API to umbrella to feed that list of custom security, uh, blacklist or whitelist into the umbrella policy for your organization. And no matter what the disposition, new telemetry continuously powers the predictive updates. So it's not something that you have to download and update and upload and configure sort of day by day. It's gonna happen for you automatically in the background uh, based on Cisco Talos security intelligence feeds. Um, in the event of a proxy disposition, you'll see the URL request. We even see the file hash at the HTTP or HTTPS layer. Um, you, know, you talk about the proxy, risky domains. Let's look at that a little bit deeper. With phishing, malware, ransomware, and other threats, they're very usually and often host and hosted at domains that exhibit malicious behavior. And we block them at the domain level accordingly. But some domains host both malicious and safe content. So that's an example of a domain we would consider risky. These often allow users to upload and share content, making them difficult to police. So we need more info to accurately determine if these are safe or malicious. So what do we inspect with Cisco Umbrella? Well, we use Cisco Talos Intelligence, Cisco Web, Cisco Web Reputation System, and other third-party feeds to determine if the URL is malicious. If it's still unknown after that, we add the web and the web addresses for a web hosted file that matches our 150 plus file types. For example, PDFs, JPEGs, many more, we look at file reputation. We use antivirus engines and Cisco Secure Endpoint or AMP to block malicious files before downloaded. So all that works together in Umbrella. Unique protections from DNS layer security. So good Umbrella DNS layer security, that's your basic package. Better 
add the cloud security service with the secure web gateway, a full proxy and firewall, and best, of course, both. These are all available in various packages from Cisco Umbrella, and we can start with the good, go to the better, and best give you full, both entire coverage with Cisco Umbrella, Secure Web Gateway, and the DNS level security. So what we do with that is to prevent connections before, during, and during the attack. So whether the before is stopping the uh, command and control callbacks that are, say, initiated from something that's infected inside your host or how, however it happened, we block the communication to an attacker server. And then we also stop data exfiltration or the download of ransomware encryption keys. C2 callbacks, command and control callbacks are blocked using the same DNS enforcement process we just described. And in the event that a malicious payload is designed to bypass DNS and use a direct to IP connection, we go beyond DNS to provide malicious IP blocking and enforcement, all to stop that data exfiltration and ransomware encryption. We use a combination of statistical and machine learning models. I won't get too deep into these, but just wanted to mention that, you know, that massive set of diverse data, those 350 billion requests per day, the 100 million active users, et cetera, are combined, not just as raw data, but parsed and used as actionable, turned into actionable information by the Cisco Talos security researchers. They build models that can automatically classify and score domains and IP addresses, dozens of models. They continuously analyze millions of live events per second so that we can automatically uncover malware, ransomware, and other threats and give you that protection as soon as humanly possible. So there are also connections and integrations with Umbrella. We have a number of different ways you can get into it. So you could use an IPsec tunnel with or without a uh, with or without a PAX for the cloud based uh, cloud delivered firewall and the web traffic at your headquarters and branch, you can use a proxy chain and a PAC file. You can have secure VPN that is AnyConnect and your roaming client. The AnyConnect roaming client, whether or not it's being used for VPN, can have that Cisco secure roaming client option turned on in it, so that when your clients are roaming, even if they're not on the VPN back to your headquarters. The web traffic and their DNS security is still enforced even when they're fully uh, disconnected from the corporate enterprise. So on network, that's your traditional way you may be familiar with. Your laptop goes to an internal DNS server. The internal DNS server is set to use the umbrella addresses. For instance, here the 208.67.222.222. That is the umbrella AnyCast address for the cloud DNS security. And because Umbrella will recognize that it came from your network egress IP, in this case, 67215.87.11, it says, oh, this came from this specific organization. This organization is licensed for Umbrella protection. Therefore, I will apply their particular policy and enforce all the security settings that you have configured. So that's the very easy on-network device protection. We can also do tunneling capability. For instance, in the event of a remote branch where we set up a tunnel between that branch and the umbrella data centers, 250 megabits or optionally 500 megabits per second tunnel. And you can put multiple of those in a equal cost multipath sort of setup. So, and additionally, you have failover over there. So your traffic is getting tunneled to the cloud and all the security inspection is being done there. By doing that, you avoid the need to have local firewalls deployed at all those different sites because the edge router at the branch is tunneling all the traffic to Umbrella for the secure web gateway, the cloud delivered firewall functionality. And again, in the event of the primary fails, secondary data center in the same region will automatically take over in this use case. Also, DR sites, dynamic failover, no configuration required. It just works automatically. So if you're a Cisco SD-WAN, a VIP tower customer, it's very easy to integrate that. Um, the, whether it's the IPsec tunnel deployment, the management, again, simplified management there. You have a single pane of glass with VIP tower. You just turn on the umbrella protection. And you can also get those deeper inspections and controls, the secure web gateway, the CASB, cloud delivered firewall at layers three, four, and seven. You can very quickly deploy cloud security like that across your SD-WAN to thousands of branches in a matter of minutes just by setting a policy and turning it on. And then you instantly gain protection against threats on the internet. 
all powered by that umbrella global network and threat intelligence. It gives you a fast forward time to value with automated security. It gives you top rated security efficacy for the branch and remote workers. Actually for two years in a row, the AV test research placed umbrella first in security efficacy. A secure web gateway full proxy solution gives you the highest level of protection and security, security efficacy and Umbrella's SWG beats the competition. There'll be a link to that report if you're interested in the uh, slides that we'll provide after this presentation. So deploying a secure SD-WAN, it used to take months. Um, when you're using Umbrella and we have the automated provisioning and tunnel creation, you can protect your branches and users in minutes, literally. Um, you can auto register to Umbrella without the need to manually add API keys. So the SD-WAN auto registers to Umbrella. All the edge devices are automatically uh, registered to Umbrella. The secure API key is automatically provisioned on the edge device. And that happens all through an HTTPS, a secure session. And the registration is based on your smart account, virtual account credentials for both Umbrella and SD-WAN. Similarly, the IPsec tunnel creation automatically happens. You push that secure internet gateway feature template uh, across your, uh, you know, from your vManage, Viptela manager, across to all your vEdge devices in your enterprise. And you can now set up that IPsec tunnel automatically in the background, no manual configuration required. If you didn't have that, you would have to go in there and manually make tunnels per branch, per branch, per branch, times however many branches you have, all the overhead and the management that goes along with that. By the integration of Umbrella and Cisco SD-WAN products, you have that very, very easy to deploy solution that allows you to take advantage of all those Cisco Umbrella solutions. And one other one I want to mention right here is the Cisco AnyConnect secure mobility client. You've got the entitlement for that roaming security bit. So if you look at your AnyConnect secure mobility client, it not only includes the VPN tab, you'll see there on the right, but that roaming security bit. So when you have the roaming security enabled, that gives you that umbrella protection for all of your remote clients, whether they're connected to the VPN or not. You'll see in there, it'll check the licensing, it'll check the DNS security, show you that you're protected. So what you're doing with that is really using that protection to give you the ability to have that control and that security on your assets, whether they're on network or off network. And you'll get the full visibility into who are the users, what policies is being applied to them, and what issues, if any, are they seeing? So again, enforcement that works together. You've got the umbrella DNS layer security, your first check for all malicious or unwanted domains based on a domain block slash allow list. So what that first check does is it reduces the amount of traffic that's sent to the cloud delivered firewall. Hey, if I know it's a malicious domain, I don't need to send it to the cloud firewall to look at a deeper inspection. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it right at the client. I'm not even going to allow it to resolve the domain. That improves the responsiveness and performance. So next, if it passes that, then we go up to the cloud delivered firewall there. We can enforce IP, port, and protocol rules. And finally, the secure web gateway, which will check all your web traffic for malware and other policy violations. So all that enforcement works together seamlessly, doesn't have to be separately configured. Your client, your site, whatever it may be, automatically uses Umbrella once it's configured and pushed. Now, the outcome and then the DNS, the cloud delivered firewall, a secure web gateway. As you can see, each one of them has sort of a role to play. You start with the DNS, add on the cloud delivered firewall. So anything not blocked by DNS gets seen by that cloud delivered firewall. And then further, if we have 80 slash 443, that is web traffic, HTTP, HTTPS, we send that to the secure web gateway if it hasn't been blocked by a firewall policy. And then we can look at that in more depth. And I'll talk a little bit more depth about the CDFW and the SWG in the coming slides. Speaking of which, Secure Web Gateway. So really what we have with Secure Web Gateway is once you've routed your web traffic to the Umbrella Cloud, we can give you that URL level reporting to help with monitoring usage or for investigations. You've got application visibility and control so that you have the ability to see what apps are being used and how much. 
we reduce uh, your risk by giving you the ability to block app categories or specific apps. You can even control specific applications or actions within applications, such as, hey, I want to be able to access Dropbox, but not upload to Dropbox. I want to be able to use maybe Microsoft Teams, but not the video feature. Whatever your policy is, you can implement that through the Secure Web Gateway. You can turn on full or selective decryption capabilities so that you can decrypt the HTTPS traffic and enforce file type controls. Uh, for instance, you may want to say allow the Office 365 time sensitive traffic, send that directly to Microsoft, but then use other controls to look at other types of traffic. So we combine all of that functionality and reporting along with the DNS security and the cloud delivered console, the cloud delivered firewall and a single console. All this is managed through the same cloud based console. It's not multiple consoles for multiple applications. And again, I mentioned the direct to SaaS, direct to software as a secure bus, software as a service app, for instance, the Office 365 bypass. So you can bypass the SWG for Office 365, but you still get the advantage of the fact that Cisco Umbrella and their data centers has direct peering with all the major cloud services. With that cloud delivered firewall, you get the full URR, URL tracking and reporting visibility into all your web traffic, detailed URL level reporting so that you can monitor specific networks or users, provide detailed data in case you have to do an investigation, a forensic or legal investigation or human resources investigation. You can see exactly all of the URLs that were accessed by a given user. And as well as that, you can see trends for reporting. I mentioned the ability to easily apply policy you go in and set your policies, say your acceptable use policies, security categories, et cetera. Uh, we do use the Talos categories for content and security, over a hundred of them, and they're dynamically updated uh, in that cloud. But you go in and you set those policies, you push the apply and boom, it's immediately applied in all of your devices and sites or across the subset of them if you wish to do so. Malware and virus protection. So we scan all that web traffic, including the HTTPS, if you choose to decrypt for viruses and malware. We use the power of the Cisco Secure Endpoint, the AMP technology, multiple antivirus engines, and all the details of the block destinations are provided in the reporting console. So you can do that tracking and investigation. You see a couple there, the actual, uh, the identity of the, uh, of the workstation here it was Jumper, just a Jumper workstation where they were going to and you know what was blocked why it was blocked you can drill down into any of those details on any of those events um, we even see files that say they made it through the Cisco secure endpoint malware scan but we don't know about them um, they are potentially risky we can enable the threat grid malware analysis and file inspection so by doing that what we do is we send those files off to threat grid for further analysis so we can have a deeper inspection of the file. They'll actually open the file, uh, watch for indicators of compromise and watch for bad behavior on that file. And then we can give you a, uh, a later disposition on that file to say, hey, that file has now been deemed malicious or now been deemed clean and we want to block or quarantine it going forward. So I mentioned that sandbox inspection, you'll get a threat score off of a file. You'll see if there was malware in the file. Um, it'll give you the actual the actual malware name. And what that really does is lets us look at files that have never been seen anywhere before and run them through the sandbox, see what they might actually contain and do a disposition on them. So that's secure malware analytics, which you may have heard of before as threat grid. We also give you the ability to control specific activities for you know, most of your popular software as a service or SAPs applications. So you see a list of the cloud applications in use, which you can see on the background on there for a given cloud application. I alluded to this earlier, say Dropbox in this example, you can control block Dropbox. What do we want to do? Do we want to block it all together, allow it without further comment, or say only uh, block uploads, say by default, but maybe HR is allowed to upload. Uh, so maybe we will uh, allow HR to upload, but we block it by default. For all other users. You can do all that again in that single cloud console for Umbrella. So you've got all those granular controls for your popular 
software as a service apps, whether they're social media, webmail, storage, collaboration, et cetera, you see a listing there. That's not a complete listing, but I think that listing probably covers 98% of the uh, popular SaaS apps out there by volume of them, everything from Box to, to Vimeo uh, and WhatsApp. So we can allow certain things, block other things, and do that, again, very easily through that single cloud console. So a typical use case would be like, if you have, say, enabled Box for cloud storage, but you don't want users to be using other cloud storage solutions. Uh, but hey, maybe some partners that you're working with don't use Box, they use Dropbox. So what we do is we say, hey, we will allow the, uh, you know, allow the Dropbox for accessing files from that partner, but you don't allow your people to upload to Dropbox. They have to use Box. So you can have that full granularity. You can allow for some, block for others, uh, and uh, leave others alone. Whatever your policy is, you can enforce that through the umbrella cloud uh, console. Uh, talk a little bit about HTTPS. So most of the web traffic, anywhere from 80 to 90% is now HTTPS. That is, it's encrypted with SSL, TLS. Um, if we don't decrypt that, we see very little about what's inside a given request. We see maybe the server name indication, uh, the source and destination IP addresses, and the uh, fully qualified domain name, the FQDN from the server certificate. That's really all we see unless and until we decrypt the request. And we don't even see the URL below, uh, you know, below that top level domain without that SSL uh, decryption and inspection. So it's been very problematic to do that on the uh, edge or on your premises. It takes a lot of horsepower. But by using the cloud-based solution from Umbrella, we can give you that decryption, reporting, and inspection with no hardware expense, none of the scaling issues as encrypted internet traffic increases, as well as the ability to selectively decrypt. And you may want to not decrypt everything for certain reasons. Um, privacy, for instance, you might not want to decrypt financial or healthcare site traffic. So you can easily turn on that full or selective decryption from the Umbrella console. And once you do that, you can then leverage that Cisco Secure Endpoint, the Cisco Secure Malware Analysis, and the Umbrella Threat Intelligence to further protect your encrypted web traffic, give you all that visibility. You then have a lot more granular app control, URL level functionality, as well as the file scanning and sandboxing for those otherwise encrypted files. You can even block pages from rendering uh, based on that decryption. So things you couldn't do at the DNS layer, you can do once you've done that encryption in the cloud. Another fun function that we offer through that cloud Deliberate firewall secure web gateway is inbound file type control so that we can enforce compliance, security, and acceptable use policy. So we can protect you against the download of high risk files that could infect your endpoints. We give you detailed reporting on blocked files, whatever they were, media files, video files, risky files, uh, disk images, you know, ISOs, things like that. Give you all that visibility to both control the usage as well as see what the usage is uh, in your cloud dashboard. Typical place where we do that here. Again, you go into the file type control. You have the HTTPS inspection on. Through the combination of those two settings, you then have the ability to go into and fine tune what you're doing with those files. So we look at file type control. You can choose from all these different categories you see here on the left go down to individual file types. For instance, audio file types here are shown on the right. You can go in and apply policy controls for each individual file type as you wish or all as a group. And even if you aren't enforcing or restricting access to them, you can also show the specific files that were involved because we're doing that HTTPS decryption. You see here, you'll see the full file in the string there of what was the actual file downloaded. And we can use that for your reporting and analysis. Maybe you wanna make some decisions on a policy after you've monitored it passively and then further restrict it going forward. You can do that with this solution. The Cloud Delivered Firewall, specifically drill into that for just a few minutes. That is really what we would call an outbound firewall. This is not your traditional on-prem firewall controlling inbound access. This is for outbound use cases, which are really essential for securing access to the internet when all your users are remote. We 
control cloud app usage from there. That's our focus. Access control, what ports, protocols, applications are allowed or not from those clients or those branches who aren't going through the headquarters security stack. What security controls do we want to apply on the outbound traffic? Do we want to proxy some or all the web traffic? Uh, and we even have a roadmap for DLP or data loss protection compliance so we can add those capabilities into Umbrella going forward. Um, you know, we don't focus on the inbound traffic via VPN, traffic between locations. We're not a web application firewall that is uh, between a web application and the internet or reverse proxy, and we're not a DMZ or NAT, but we are an outbound firewall that's cloud delivered for you in the, uh, in the cloud delivered firewall. So layer seven, application visibility control, you tunnel all your outbound traffic to Umbrella, block high risk on web applications, centrally manage that. IP port and protocol and application rules, layers three, four, and seven. If, to, if you've desired and have the license for it, forward to web traffic, ADU and 443 to a secure web gateway, and also IPsec tunnel termination for those remote branches that were potentially using uh, an IPsec tunnel to get their traffic up to that cloud delivered firewall. So again, the flow here for your services, uh, for those branches, Forward the traffic via IPsec tunnel to the cloud, resolve the DNS security according to the policy, allow it or block it, log it. If we're going to inspect it, send it over to the cloud delivered firewall. If it's allowed over ADR 443, send it to the secure web gateway. Everything else goes up to the internet through a net. Everything is logged at every step of the way, um, including the secure web gateway. It does its policy inspection, traffic is logged there. Again, all allowed traffic, whether it was allowed through the DNS, the cloud delivered firewall secure web gateway goes through a Cisco managed net up in the cloud and you'll see that source being 146.112.xx uh, because it was coming from Cisco's net, not your own on-premise net. And that application visibility and control, it's not unique with the cloud delivered firewall. We've just extended it for broader coverage. You already had some of that with DNS layer security where you had the ability to identify potential risk, block specific apps if desired. Uh, the secure web gateway can block web-based apps at the URL level. And then the cloud delivered firewall just complements that. It extends that application and visibility control to non-web, non-HTTPS traffic, such as apps that don't use DNS lookups, apps that use hard-coded IP addresses, or apps where a signature-based detection that is not based on IP domain or URL is required to detect and block. Um, as of today, we can identify and block over a, a thousand apps, and that's a growing list all the time. So the key use cases for this layer seven application visibility control or ABC, I mentioned shadow IT earlier. That is uh, shadow IT potentially happening over non-web ports, uh, unapproved software as a service apps, say maybe WebEx was allowed, MS Teams video not allowed, Google Hangouts not allowed. We can enforce that policy with the cloud delivered firewall, block in secure applications on non standard ports, block on sanctioned web, web traffic on non web ports. All of those we do in that cloud delivered firewall, again, all managed policy wise through that single web interface that's hosted in the cloud, and as well as the policy management, the policy enforcement, and the reporting and visibility. What that looks like in the GUI, very simple, kind of easy to read, easy to configure. A couple rules here, block SSH, a rule to block peer-to-peer, -peer, and a default rule to allow. And again, you can see your hit count, you can see your volume of traffic in there. Those ellipses on the right, you can click on any of those, and you'll drill down into every one of those. So the cloud delivered firewall, great use for remote locations to secure those remote branch locations. Uh, remote offices that can then use that direct internet access for convenience and performance and still get the security of the cloud delivered firewall. So you build that into how you get to the internet. We can use it for the secure guest Wi-Fi use case. So a lot of organizations want to provide that secure guest Wi-Fi, but you might be concerned about guests connecting with infected devices, accessing inappropriate content, engaging in peer-to-peer -peer fire sharing. All those can be risky to your organization, even if it's not directly interacting inside your organization, it's coming from your 
web address or your web gateway or from a service that you're providing. By using Cisco Umbrella, we can enforce a policy specific for your guest to make sure that their compliance with the acceptable use policy is enforced and monitored. And one that's a little bit less immediately obvious, but enable IP obfuscation. So what that does, if you remember a few slides back, I showed that when that traffic went through the Cisco cloud, it went out a NAT at the Cisco side where that network address translation showed the address as something coming from Cisco umbrella versus something coming from your organization. And what that does is it enables you to anonymize your IP addresses and separate your guest and employee traffic so that there's no negative impact on your security rating, like an M uh, bit site uh, sort of analysis of what's going on, web analytics of traffic or, uh, originating from your organization that's been obfuscated by using the Cisco cloud firewall services. And the last functionality I want to touch on briefly is CASB, uh, that cloud uh, application security broker. You know, who's doing what with my cloud applications? Once I've enabled people to go into the cloud applications, can I detect account compromises or malicious insiders extracting information? Um, you know, do I have corporate data that's not supposed to be in the cloud? Maybe it's toxic, maybe it's regulated. Is it being inappropriately shared? You know, how do I even detect that? How can I monitor app usage? Do I have third parties connecting? Can I revoke usage of risky apps? Yes, we can do that. Um, we have a couple ways. We have the Cloud Lock product, the out of band API based product, and you have the inline proxy, which is what Umbrella does at app visibility and blocking, advanced app controls, and tenant controls. So, what you'll see there in that proxy is solving some of the three biggest challenges related to shadow IT visibility, the app and risk insight, the optimization and, block and blocking. Again, that same web console is giving you that view that we're looking at here. You know, visibility is the first step, but it isn't enough on its own. Yeah, a list of apps, that's interesting, but with hundreds of SaaS apps, you know, we need to know through the insight, what is a better understanding of what is this vendor? What is this app? What are the risk details? So we can make informed decisions and actively manage cloud adoptions. All of that detailed information gives you the business, IT and security leaders to make uh, the ability to make informed decisions so you can improve collaboration and limit risk as you transition to the cloud. You group apps by category, you review the risk profile information, and you can select intelligently which ones to approve as well as which categories and applications you may want to block. So overall, that visibility and control help you manage cloud adoption by optimizing productivity, controlling cloud expenses potentially, and reducing the risk to your organization. You got the data at rest there that we're starting to introduce right now through a limited ability, availability feature where we can actually look at the files at rest in your cloud repositories and we see it, you know, maybe it got there via endpoints that weren't covered with Cisco Secure Endpoint or AMP. Maybe they came in through unmanaged devices. Maybe they were external sharing, sharing files with other companies. We can scan those repositories and on an ongoing basis, save the events for cloud storage, prevent that malware from spreading to additional endpoints and users. You can control individual tenants. Uh, for instance, you may want to allow Microsoft Office 365 to your corporate instance, but disallow personal instances of access to Microsoft 365, giving you better security, making sure that your sensitive data is created and stored in approved instances of cloud apps, not in personal instances, which could bypass those corporate controls. And again, mentioning that app discovery and control for that shadow IT, we can see all of those different apps. You see a bunch of unreviewed apps here, you know, proxy sites, private tunnels, you know, uh, Express VPN, different VPN solutions. You can see if they're in use on your network and you can prevent them right there at that, again, single dashboard in the cloud. I'll skip past this apps grid and app and risk insight. You know, when you maybe so see an application, you're not quite sure what it is, you can drill down into it. You see, okay, cyber goes VPN. What is the business risk? What's the usage risk? What's the vendor compliance? profile of that to help you better make an informed decision on how you want to handle that app in your organization. And Cloud Lock itself, again, adds on to what Umbrella does where you can actually manage that data loss protection through those integrations between cloud uh, applications, potentially using OAuth. So that is the ability to like cross launch between say a box and an Office 365 or a Dropbox and a Slack, those sort of inter cloud communications are controlled with Cisco Cloud Lock as a 
standalone CASB. So again, overall, the Cisco Advantage, it's easy to consume. Our packaging and entitlement reporting are right there in that single console. Your enterprise agreement can cover Cisco Umbrella. And we've got both pre and postpaid payment terms for service providers to be able to provide that to your tenant organizations. You've got a great user experience. Um, you know, your access to allowed apps has really been optimized. We've added security. We didn't add any latency. And we give you very consistent performance and reliability. I mentioned earlier, fast to deploy, simple to manage, whether it's through your SD-WAN, your single touch auto provisioning, your integrated troubleshooting, your service assurance, all built into the Cisco umbrella solution. And it comes down to giving you really the best security protection, ranked number one in the industry for efficacy, uh, real-time threat intelligence from Cisco Talos. And one last slide or two, Cisco SecureX. Couldn't stop without mentioning that. That is our built-in to every Cisco security product provided for free at no extra charge. If you've got additional Cisco applications or third-party applications you want to integrate through orchestration, we do that with SecureX, transforming your infrastructure from a series of disjointed solutions into a fully integrated ecosystem because it builds on capabilities across the Cisco portfolio and connects to third-party tools. Um, you know, we know you use other vendors besides Cisco, so Cisco SecureX is integrated and open to work with every tool, Cisco or otherwise. For instance, if you rely on Microsoft to store identities, Splunk to store data, ServiceNow for service management, um, great, connect them all via SecureX. Uh, you can then have a cloud-native platform, SecureX, to simplify your security experience, not only for IT operations and network operations, but as well as secure operations. It's not another technology layer, but it, what it does is maximize the potential of your existing security solutions. You can start out with that single product and glow as your needs dictate. SecureX, as an architecture, sits there. It's secured with the Duo MFA included in a SecureX, and it integrates whether they're Cisco products uh, as well as third-party products. I mentioned your Splunk, your Microsoft for Identity, other seams, other things like Virus Total other threat intelligence feeds, all can be integrated into SecureX, and you can really start to build orchestration. Say, if I see this from Umbrella, then take this action in Cisco ICE, for example. Or if I see this going on in Firepower, then please look this up in Umbrella and raise an alert and open it in ServiceNow and automatically do all that for me. SecureX is the architecture and the tool that allows you to do that. And once again, SecureX is a free add-on that's included with every Cisco security product, so SecureX. That does conclude my briefing this morning. I want to thank you all for your time and attention. If there are any questions regarding any of the content I've gone over today, uh, feel free to raise those questions now. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, if not, this recording is going to be made available through our website uh, to all of our customers and partners and it'll be available to them. So you're always free to contact your local Cisco account manager uh, or your DSI account manager, your sales team, to get more information on any of the things I talked about this morning. Thank you. So on behalf of me, thank you very much, Marvin, for the presentation. Uh, once you send that over to me, that recording, it will be posted to the Meek website and I will forward it to those that registered. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you everyone on behalf of DSI for attending. And like Marvin said, feel free to reach out with any questions to request a demo or you can get a security assessment at dsitech.com. So thank you again, and this ends our webinar. So please enjoy the rest of your day.